Now calyx are the non-essential floral part and they are the first one in the flower on the outermost or you can say the lowermost node and they are the outermost whorl and they are made up of green leafy sepals and function is to protect the other floral parts during the bud stage plus to perform photosynthesis. Uh, we need to remember that calyx is always uh, it's always green but exceptional plants are there where calyx may become non-green in color. Such calyx are called as petaloid and examples we have learned already. The calyx is made up of sepals and the arrangement can be either all the sepals are free. In such categories the calyx would be termed as polysepalous. If the sepals fuse with various degrees then they are called as gamosepalous. Uh, we learned the various names for various degrees. Uh, this has the minimum fusion, uh, increased fusion, half of the length is fused, maximum length is fused. So accordingly they are called as conate, partite, fid and tooth type of gamosepalous calyx. Now calyx has various uh, variable lifespan also. In some plants, they, they fall as soon as the flower open or you can say the petals show up and the sepals are gone. Such type of sepals are called as caducus. Example, Papaveraceae family or poppy. Papaver is a scientific name of poppy. Uh, in some plants, the sepals wither along with the other floral portion. So in such categories, it is called as deciduous. Example, brassica. Persistent type is uh, of two type again. Persistent will persist even in the fruit and they may become green in color. They may remain big, they may grow along with the fruit size or they may become dried one. So in the case of guava you must have seen they are dried one. Uh, and in the case of the banana also they are dried and black in color. But in the case of uh, tomato and all you will find they grow in size and they remain green. So Solanaceae family has a crescent type of persistent calyx. Now various shapes also we learned in the last class before we went into the breaks. Uh, we learned that the shape of the calyx can be bell shaped. Remember these shapes are gamosepalous. So they can be bell shaped. Bell shaped is called as campanulate. Uh, easiest example petunia. Uh, the Urn shaped is called as the arceolate. Easiest example is silene or pink, P-I-N-K, pink flower. Then we have uh, the uh, hood shape possible. Hood shape is called as the hooded one. Easiest example is aconitum. Cup shape is found in some plants and cup shape is called as the, com uh, is called as the uh, cupulate. Cupulate example is gossypium or what you call as cotton. Funnel shape is found is, is called as infundibulum. Infundibulum uh, is found in many plants like in Dhatura, also in the case of Atropa. Uh, Tube-like is called as the tubular. Tubular is found in Verbena. Spur is, uh, spur is called as the spurred one and uh, spurred type of calyx is found in Delphinium garden nasturtium. I have told about these names before also. In, um, in the case of Tulsi family, you will find two lips are there that is called as the bilibiate. Bilibiate is common among the plants which come into Lemiaceae Lemi or bilibiata family. Then uh, the sepals can even become uh, globular in shape. They may become spiny, they may become hairy. Uh, hairy very common in the case of Composita family or uh, Asteraceae family, Sunflower family gland dotted or pouch type so we did all these things before we went into the breaks and we today we will start with the corolla topic now the corolla is also the non-essential part so uh, that means they are not directly involved in the sexual reproduction but they may assist in the process of attracting the insects and all because corolla is basically uh, fragrant or otherwise nectar secreting so there would be glands which are responsible for attracting the insects so they attract the pollinators insects birds whatever and uh, biotic agents living agents for pollination and perform and they help in the process of pollination so uh, remember they are the non-essential one second world uh, of brightly colored petals and they may have fragrance they may have nectar secreting glands at the base and they protect the essential organs. 
uh, exceptional plants are also there where corolla becomes green in color and such corolla would be called as sepaloid type then just like in the case of the calyx we may have two types of corolla polypetalous if all the petals are free gamosepalous if all the petals are fused type now polypetalous basically has four main types so those types are cruciform now cruciform means uh, crucifix word comes from the bible crucifix word stands for a cross so cruciform means a cross type of form so when you see the flower from top it looks like a cross or a plus sign so the plus sign mean how many petals would be there you can easily make out four petals are there so cruciform type of petals are uh, cruciform type of polypetalous corolla is found in the brassicaceae family so in the case of brassicaceae family you will find four petals are there and they form a cross type of shape and uh, i have drawn the shape how exactly the petal looks like such petals are called as unguiculate because they have a limb and they have a claw type of structure if you have ever paid attention to the rose petal a small dot like thing is present here so this is called as the limb and this portion is called as the claw so there are there are plants in which claw and limb may have different shapes and sizes and such type of petals are called as unguiculate petals now when you look at the brassicaceae family or you brassicaceae means reddish or mustard or cauliflower cabbage they all come into brassicaceae family this type of flower would be there four petals would be there and then the next one is caryophyllaceous now caryophyllaceous is found in caryophyllaceae family or the family of sweet williams or dianthus uh, plant or carnation plants now in this in this type you will have five petals 